If you are a machine and Ableton Live user, you are in for a treat, as today we are looking at a free third-party Ableton Live MIDI remote script that turns your Machine MK3 or Machine Plus into a super capable Ableton Live controller, indeed almost like a push. And yes, Native Instruments have their own official Ableton Live script, which was recently updated to work with Machine Plus. It's a simpler script that may be enough for some people, so don't overlook it as it's much easier to learn and get used to, and it's still great for people who will be doing most of the things with a mouse and a keyboard anyway, so it's really not bad. On the other hand, the unofficial one we'll be looking at today has a crazy amount of features, and so it has a learning curve, especially if you want to take advantage of everything it offers. So this script was made by a user on the machine community forum called Chiaki Beats. And I have no idea who they are, but huge shout out to them for creating this and making it available for free. Wow, it's free. The files themselves can be downloaded from GitHub and I will link it in the video description down below which is just below that like button, so while you're down there, you might as well, you know. Now, there are some things I expected this to have, like transport controls, undo, redo, quantize, device control, clip launching, mixer controls, blah, blah, blah. It does all these things, but it goes way beyond that. And it actually blew me away with stuff like full browser control, clip editing, creating, deleting, duplicating tracks and clips, fixed length, recording in the session view? What? I thought only push could do that. Keyboard mode that respects the scale of your Ableton Live set. And even a step sequencer, like, come on, man, like, step sequencer? And Chiaki Beats has published a full list of all operations you can do with this on the GitHub page. And with so many features, it would make the video way too long to go through all of them. So I'm just gonna highlight some of them just so you get an idea of what's possible. And so with this template, you have great control over both session and arrangement view. You use the arranger button to switch between both views. Turning the main encoder scrolls between tracks and automatically record enables them. And also in the session view, the four directions of the encoder move the rectangle that selects different sections of the session view and this is reflected in the clip view here and as you can see the clips also have the corresponding colors on the machine pads and also when you're in keyboard mode when you select different tracks they change color again corresponding to the color of the selected track transport controls work as expected play stop record, enable or disable loop, enable or disable metronome and tap tempo of course. But definitely the coolest thing here is that capture MIDI actually works. So you just play something without recording. And then you hit shift plus record. And it's captured. The erase button does what you would expect it to do by holding it, you can delete a clip. You can of course undo that, shift plus pad one. But you can also even duplicate clips. Hold duplicate, tap the clip, tap an empty space. It's now duplicated, just like you would expect it to. While we are in the session view, you might wonder how do you trigger a certain scene? You just hold the scene button and this row of pads turns into a scene trigger button. Pretty cool. <laughs> Controlling the main volume or groove amount or tempo work exactly like in the machine software. So you just change the mode from these buttons. Let's say we're in the volume mode and now we're controlling the master volume. Change the, just go to tempo. Now you are changing the tempo and with the swing, you are controlling the global groove amount. And you know, just hitting the file button creates a new audio track. Pretty damn cool, man. Or holding shift while hitting the file button creates a new MIDI track. Now, if you go to keyboard mode, we can see that the layout changes depending on whether we have a drum rack on the track or a melodic instrument. So with the drum rack, you get this drum rack layout. Oh, and by the way, if you change the color of a certain chain in the drum rack, which is like a certain pad, it is reflected on the pads of the machine controller. The attention to detail on this template is 
crazy. If we go to a track with a melodic instrument, we are now playing in the key of G minor as we've selected that scale in the scale of our Ableton Live set. If we change to F minor, we're now playing in F minor. But basically, the keyboard mode respects the scale of your Ableton Live set. You might wonder, what does the chord button do? And the chord button is actually cool to use with, with a drum rack, kind of counterintuitive, but the chord section is your 16 velocity levels, which are 12 here, but that's sufficient in my opinion. You select a note in the drum rack, it will play that sound at different velocity levels, making it easier to record drums that have nice velocity variations. Now, one possible downside to using third-party scripts like this one is that there is no guarantee that it will be updated forever as Ableton Live gets updated. And future live versions won't necessarily break compatibility with the script, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if that does happen, an update to the script will be required to make it work again. We also have note repeat and we can lock it by holding note repeat and hitting lock. And if we hit the notes button, we can use the group buttons to change the length of the note repeat. In the mixer view, we have control over panning, levels, sends, everything you can think of, including solo and mute. Now, if we hit the plugin button, we obviously have control over Ableton Live's devices. So it's gonna go to my master track where I've got my SP404 XL rack. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you hit the link in the video description down below. There's also a free version if you don't wanna pay for it. And as you can see, we have all the names of the parameters and their value. And even touching the touch strips works. But the reason I'm showing this rack is because it contains 16 macros and we got only eight knobs. But with the arrow buttons, we can select the different macro banks. So here we have the first eight macros. And now we are in the second bank of eight macros. Now by hitting shift and stop, we stop all clips. Now the craziest thing that I don't think any other controller can do, except for the push of course, fixed length recording, you can do it with this thing here. Fixed length recording means that when you record a clip in the session view, recording will automatically stop and loop the clip after a certain number of bars. So to select the length of the fixed length recording, when you are in the session mode, which is accessed by the pad mode button, you hold pattern and you can choose between one beat, two beats, one bar, two bars, four bars, eight bars, 16 bars. Let's do two bars. And to trigger the fixed length recording, you hit the record button while holding pattern. And it's looped automatically. And so the browser button activates browser mode or, or by hitting shift and browser, you can hide or unhide the browser on your computer screen. However, one thing is that when you browse from the controller, it is not reflected in the browser. So let's say I go to drums, drum hits. As you can see, the browser doesn't reflect that on the screen. I think that's how push works as well. So it's not really a big deal. So we can just go shift file, create a new MIDI track and just browse for drum racks. And we load it by hitting the encoder exactly the same way that it works on the machine software. I don't know how practical it is to browse just with a one row. You don't see too much of the browser, but it actually works pretty well. But yeah, I skipped so many great features like clip editing, arrangement view control, step sequencing, but you can check out the full list of operations on the GitHub page linked down below and try these for yourself, as this video is already a bit too long. Okay, so if you feel like this is worth your time, and I would say it definitely is, here is how to install it. So after you download the zip file from the releases section on the GitHub repository, you will find two folders. The templates folder contains the templates for Machine MK3 and Machine Plus you have to import them into the controller editor by clicking on edit 
and open. The custom machine MK3 folder is the actual Ableton Live MIDI remote script. To add it to Live, you have to create a folder called remote scripts in your user library. The default locations for the user library will be displayed on the screen, or you can find it by going into Live's preferences in the library tab. Then you have to turn on your machine and press Shift plus channel to enter MIDI mode or if you use machine plus you have to switch to controller mode first. So once you've done that, open Ableton Live and in the preferences go to the link tempo and MIDI tab and select custom machine MK3 as a control surface and machine MK3 virtual as both input and output. And on Windows this will be called machine MK3 control MIDI. And if you've done everything correctly, your machine controller should kind of look like this and you're ready to rock. But yeah, if you've outgrown the machine software but still want to use your controller with life, this is awesome. And it makes sense because even almost eight years after the release of the MK3, machine is still a fantastic controller. So go get it. Let me know what you think in the comments below and to support the channel if the video was useful. Hit that like button, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to take that support a bit further, get one or two of my packs, link is down below. Great stuff for Ableton Life users, and yeah, I will catch you later.